Are you an adventurer looking to take your hunt to the next level? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the East Meets West Hunt Podcast, Mountain Buck Q&A edition, brought to you by Timber Ninja Outdoors. The way these episodes go, these are short 10 to 20 minute episodes that are answering your questions that you've sent in all about hunting, big woods, mountain bucks, anything that I think I can answer or have experience with, I'd like to throw a shot at it based off of your questions. Well, for the first few that we've had here, some of these ones have been not a single question that's come in, but a multitude of questions that I've kind of combined into one to be able to get it out there. So as we start rolling with it, we'll get a little bit more detailed into single questions. But on this one, I wanted to go into my entire gear list for hunting the rut. So the questions that I've been getting is, you know, like, all right, what saddle are you using? What are you carrying in your pack down to what snacks are you having? All these different things that have to do with hunting all day, sitting in a tree during the rut. So I had did a video back in 2020 that had to do my rut hunting gear list. And it's one of the, the top performing videos that I had on YouTube. And also a lot of questions about, man, you carry a lot of stuff. So I wanted to dive into it, and honestly, my list hasn't changed a whole lot. Some of the specifics have, but uh, I'm still running the same kit. But So if you're listening to the audio version here, over on YouTube, I do have my pack fully packed here that I'm going to be unloading, showing in front of the, the camera here. So if you like having a visual, that might be the best place to do it. Now, I do apologize even for the, the video version here that it's just one camera angle. I'm standing in front of it. You can't see everything that I'm doing. But uh, the point of it is to be able to go through this gear list, tell you what's here. And then also, I'll put this full gear list on the eastmeetswesthunt.com slash journal on the website over there. So I'll put all of it there with links to the gear that I have, any discount codes that are available that I can get from some of these companies to pass along to you. All that stuff will be there. So I want to start off by saying my pack is big when it comes to hunting the rut. And I carry a lot of stuff. And the reason for that is if I'm going to be sitting, you know, 12, 14 hours a day in a tree, I want to be comfortable. I want to have the necessary food. I want to have everything that I need. And and also my mine might be a little bit larger just from the fact I'm carrying camera equipment. But uh yeah, I'm just going to run through this whole thing. And the, the way I pack my pack is I always take anything that I need first and put it on the outside and then work my way in. This is something I've learned the hard way of trying to dig through your stuff while you're in the woods with a headlamp or in a tree to get to the things that you need. So everything I do comes from the outside in. Now let's start off. So I have the, the Sika cargo box pack. So this is a pack that I helped sick uh, work on back in when was it 2017 I think was the first year that I worked on this pack with them and uh, with Chris Derrick and the, and the team over there this is meant to be able to haul tree stands saddle equipment sticks all of that stuff and have a pretty large uh, inside bucket in here to be able to have all your stuff but also easily be able to access that while you're in the tree so what I like about it is uh, that has a lot of these straps on the top and the bottom to put extra layers. So when you're hiking even a half mile up to two miles or further in, you can't wear all of your clothes while you're heading into the woods. So I just wear um, my lightweight stuff as I'm heading in, which I'll get into my clothing here later. But then I pack my extra insulation layers as I go in. Now, the way I, I run everything here is on top, I use the lashing straps to put my Sika Stratus bibs. So the Stratus system is what I wear probably 90% of the time during the rut and pre-rut because this system is very versatile. It's windproof. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. It packs down nicely, but I'm a big fan of this system. So that's why I have the, the Stratus system that I'll put up on top of my pack. So to show you a little bit about how this is, I take off, the first thing I need to do is take off my bibs here and put them on. Because if I'm gonna be getting in my saddle, you can't be putting your bibs on while you're ready in the tree. 
So that's first and foremost are the bibs. Underneath that, if I'm going to a place where I have, you know, an opening or something and I want to entice a buck, I will carry a Montana decoy. I carry a doe decoy. I also have a small buck that I'll use on occasion. I don't use this on all hunts, but I do believe if I need to catch a deer's eye or buck's eye that it, it can be really beneficial. So I have that. And then now I'm on the outside of the pack. So the next things I need to be able to get to are my saddle platform. And let's see if I can do this while trying to show the camera. Um, so I have just the two straps in the front of the cargo box here that take off this platform, which I'm using, lay down the pack. I'm using the ledge. So the ledge is a new platform from Timber Ninja. And uh, I think sometime around when this comes out, they should have more stock of this because it sold out pretty quick. But the ledge is a big platform. It allows you to be able to stand on it like a tree stand and has powder coat non-slip. And then I use the SSP system, which is their stand stick um, and uh, platform attachment here. And what it does is... It's super lightweight, quiet, no buckles that are banging around here, as you can see, to be able to, to hit when you're in the dark trying to put this thing up. I like that system a lot. All right, now to get on the side of the pack, the bat wings here are where I carry my sticks. So what sticks I'm carrying are four Timber Ninja C1, the carbon fiber, 20-inch sticks, with one of them having a retractable aider on it. And then two of them have the magnetic stick clips that work with the Timber Ninja saddle. So when you go up, they stay on your side. You never have to come back down the tree. So I'll get those out of the way here. And, uh, but yeah, they, they go really nice and easily here on the side of this pack. Again, everything I want to do before I head up the tree it's basically on the outside of the pack. I don't even need to get into the body of it. But as you see, I got the sticks here, the, the retractable aider. You just pull it out. There it is. You can get a little bit higher, and it pushes right back up in when not in use. Carbon fiber, super quiet. You can bang them together. Doesn't make a whole lot of noise. If anything, it sounds like rattling the antlers. All right, so now moving along. I've got the pack here and uh, we'll start diving into the inside. So what I would do is I would get up in my saddle, I'll get everything set up and I go to hang my pack on the tree. So what I'm going to do, let me just get some of these out of the way for uh, some of these straps. So they're just not dangling around. They all tuck back into the, the pack itself. So you don't have dangling straps while you're up in the tree. But anyways, once I get in the tree, I hang the pack wide open. So there's, I hang it just like this. So I hang it up by the, the lid portion of it essentially and leave it wide open. Now, if there was, um, I guess if there was, it was raining or anything, I'd leave it closed and just hang it by the normal strap. But well, let's, uh, I'm taking a lot of time on here. I'm trying to keep this short and sweet, but Next, I'll hang up my camera arm. So I have the Timber Ninja. It's the carbon fiber Nomad camera arm. Super, super light, as you can see here. Packs down to nothing. No loud ratchet straps. And then I put a Tricer LP head on it. The head weighs 4.3 ounces. I bought this a while ago, and it's pretty sweet to be able to use for a camera setup. The reason why I hated self-filming most of the time in the past was because everything weighed so dang much to carry in. and was loud setting up. This is really nice for anyone that uh, is looking into self-filming. Now, this camera arm, I will say, this is not a professional camera arm. This isn't one that you're going to put a giant camera body on it with all this equipment if you're filming a TV show. But if you're a self-filmer, you want something super light and stable for what it is and quiet, this is a, a really, really nice option. Okay, now I get into the pack some more. Now it's time to start putting my layers on. Now, you might be still a little bit hot. Maybe give yourself 30 seconds to a minute to cool down, but you don't want to cool down too much because then it's hard to trap that heat in. Now, looking and say the temperatures are just below freezing. You know, it's a frosty morning. I got Sika's ambient jacket that 
that I'll throw on super packable and uh, warm. And it's also a breathable piece you could wear walking in, uh, depending on the temperature. Sometimes I will wear that walking in as well. And then as I keep going into the, the pack here, now I got the Stratus jacket. Stratus jacket, just like the bibs, windproof, throw that over. Now I got my clothing system on. Inside the lid of the pack, now kind of going into that. Now this is where I have my gloves. This is where I have my beanie, which I use a Stratus beanie, and also the Merino 330 beanie. If it's super cold, I'll layer those two together. Um, and I also have my some of my trail camera checking stuff in here. I have these waterproof cases. Got them on Amazon. I'll link to them, but uh, that I keep for my SD cards. I label one for full SD cards and one that are empty. And then I have this little dry bag. I believe this zipper bag was from Stone Glacier, uh, where I keep eight AA batteries in here, iPhone card reader, all of my keys to check my cameras. You see, I got a lot of keys there. I have all that stuff in the lid also easily to be able to, to get to there. All right, so move that off to the side and uh, keep rolling through this here. Let's see if I have anything else in the lid. Oh, I also have this little handy dandy mount here that clamps to, you can clamp it to really anything. You can clamp it to your uh, gear attachment on your tree or on a uh, branch that's nearby. And I put my uh, Insta360, it's a three, 360 degree camera, action camera. I just got this year to mess around with so that, you know, if I miss the shot on my regular camera, hopefully this thing picks it up and also just gets a second angle for you guys that are self filming. And uh, I also have the head strap for that as well, which this is just a GoPro head strap that works for that Insta360. Now, I don't love wearing that because it is, it does, that Insta360 is kind of long and tall and it's awkward on your head. And I also feel like it kind of sticks out a little bit. But also just in the, the inside of the pack here, this is where I'll carry my bleak call. I just carry one of those Primos great big can, just the dump over calls. I mean, honestly... Uh, I had a couple of people laugh about that and like, you don't have like some special call. It's like, nope, just the, the bleak call. And I've used that forever. And I, I obviously love to call. So that made sense. Also have, um, solar panel and lock here. Now, some of the trail camera stuff, I will say it depends on what I'm doing for the day, whether I bring all this extra trail camera stuff. Like if I know I'm going in, sitting dark to dark in a spot, I'm not going to carry that extra weight and carry a solar panel and a, and everything, but I do always at least have one uh, trail camera with me, which I'll get into once I get to the bat wings of this pack. But uh, diving in a little bit further here, in the bottom of my pack, the furthest place from anything is my kill kit. So inside my kill kit is everything I need to be able to butcher and process a deer in the field. Um, this is also something that typically it depends on where I'm hunting, whether I bring this whole kit. Normally I do just for ease of use. I can grab this bag, but it does have game bags in here. So it's deer size, uh, caribou gear, game bags, um, a set of nitro, nitro gloves, about 25 foot of paracord. I have, um, contractor bag, a uh, little knife sharpener, and then I have the Iron Will. It's the K1 knife. It has my custom logo engraved into it there. Uh, we did a giveaway with one of these a few years ago with Iron Will, so I still got that one of mine. And But that's my kill kit. It's pretty simple, straight to the point. I have it all in this bag here. I could take it with me. If I kill something, I can grab it out. Everything I need is in this exact spot. Uh, diving a little bit deeper in the pack here. I do carry this little, uh, mountain ops flash bag. It's a half liter bag. And inside that I have a Sawyer, um, it's the lid and the filter to the water bottle fil filtration system. So what, so instead of having to carry two water bottles, what I'll do is I'll fill my 32 ounce Nalgene up with water and usually mix a mountain ops ignite or whatever in it to, to be able to drink throughout the day to give me some energy but say uh, i had to track a deer i was moving or i was getting midday i was moving to a different spot and i was you know 
using a little bit of energy and needed some water, needed some extra water. I could fill up that now gene in the stream, screw on this filter and lid and uh, be able to drink right out of the stream. So that's, that's a real handy uh, tool to be able to have. And in case you don't want to carry a second water bottle, um, this is a, a really nice way to be able to do that and utilize the system that you already have. Uh, let me see what else I got in here. All right, my electronics bag. So this just has my, uh, it's just, this was actually like a Faru um, uh, waterproof bag here. And I have my little cheat sheet here just to list off what's inside there. Um, I have a backup black diamond storm headlamp in there, Garmin inReach mini, which actually attached that to my vinyl harness, um, anchor 10,000, the milliamp battery bank with the charging cords for iPhone, as well as my Insta 360. That thing is awesome. It's, I want to say it's like 45 bucks on Amazon and it works way better than some of the expensive ones that I've had in the past. And uh, I also keep extra trail camera batteries and headlamp batteries in here. Um, other than that, as far as electronics go, uh, I don't carry a GPS. I have Spartan Forge on my phone. And then, uh, then I have my Garmin watch that does have backup mapping in case anything went completely haywire. But uh, to keep rolling through here and uh, kind of going to be cutting close on the time I said I'd be at. But um, I have in here a little... Uh, trimmed down version of my first aid kit that I would normally carry on a Western hunt because I am, you know, usually closer to help and roads than I would be on a Western hunt. I keep something that's really just for emergencies. I have a tourniquet and then I have Uncharted's UL backcountry first aid kit, super lightweight. Uh, I'll list all of the, the contents that I keep in there over in the, on the, the blog online there so you can check that out um but yeah i always always keep a first aid kit no matter what even if it's a short hunt so i just have a little bit of a pared down version of it there i guess and um yeah so that's the inside of the pack the outside on uh one of these let me flip it up so you can see these bat wings here i carry two exodus cameras normally one at a minimum right now i have a rival cell camera and then a lift two regular camera that's in the side pocket here easy to be able to get at i don't need to tear the pack apart again you know that's if you're scouting or moving but i always like to have a camera with me or if you're hunting a spot and you get to it and your camera's dead or whatever you always have one available and then also on that side pouch there i have my Apparently it leaked all over the table here, but um, I have my Licking Branch Spray, which is the Buck Fever Synthetics um, that I had bought from Troy a while back. I bought a lot of it, so I still have some. And um, this is just in a, an old scent bottle, so it looks like a scent for, um, spray bottle, but it's not. It's got Licking Branch Spray in it. But yeah, it's definitely leaking all over here, so I got to <laughs> figure out how I did didn't have the valve closed but other side of the the bag here is where i have my poop kit so if i need to go to the bathroom i got a little dry bag here that has toilet paper hand sanitizer and uh, wet wipes in there and then any of my snacks that i have that i'd carry in the side pocket now i don't have my snacks in here at the moment but some of the things i carry heather's choice pack runes they're in my pack at all times in my truck everywhere pro bar meal bars the s'mores ones are absolutely awesome and they have a lot of calories they can be kind of a meal replacement at lunch deer jerky if i have some that's always a great option um i keep the, the mountain ops ignite trail packs in there for a little bit of energy it's sitting all day it can get tiring and i want to stay alert so i'll mix that up in my drink and then just miscellaneous snacks whatever else i have maybe some trail mix um you know really whatever else but i, I tend to bring a decent amount of food to, to sit all day but um i think that's everything that would be in the main pack itself and um now my saddle, which I'll either wear in or some, depending on the walk, I will um, pack it up to in, in the pack here. But the Timber Ninja, the ultimate saddle is my favorite saddle for sitting all day. It's a two panel saddle. 
Uh, I, I did a video that's over on the Timber Ninja YouTube channel if you want a lot more detail on this and using it. But it's a padded two panel. It molds to your body. Super comfortable for long sits. In the lumbar pocket is where I'll keep my grunt tube until I get up in the tree and then I can put that in there. But that's just so I never forget my grunt tube and it's not hanging around my neck and banging around on steps as I'm climbing up. The right pocket in their premium bags, I have two uh, eight millimeter ropes. One's a lineman with a Kong duck on it. And the other one is a tether with a Kong duck. They both fit, two of them fit in this small bag. The other side, I have my gear strap. So it's a black diamond gear strap here with some carabiners on it for hanging gear. Now, if the tree's really big, this doesn't work well. So I have, uh, I carry an extra daisy chain in here, super thin and light that I can hang my backpack lower because I like to have it down around my knees versus up high where my bow's at because that obstructs your view off to that side. So, all right, that's that. Um, moving along here, let's get into the clothing system that I'm wearing while I'm walking in. And uh, let's see here. Here it is. All right, so base layer. I've uh, been running the Sick of Merino stuff here for the last couple of years and uh, just came out this year, but uh, really sweet stuff. So I use the 120 lightweight Merino as a base, no matter how cold it is. I want to make, wick that moisture away from your skin. So I wear that nice and light. And then the 330 hoodie. This thing is absolutely awesome. I didn't think anything could potentially replace the Fanatic hoodie for me as a as a mid layer with a pocket in the front and man this is a this is a really sweet piece and the, the face mask is made out of wool so it's super thin but man is it nice to have on on cold mornings i mean i wore this thing uh up in alaska i just wore it out in south dakota mule deer hunting it's become a, a really favorite piece and then for pants i personally like the timberline pants so i'll wear these as uh, this is what I wear hiking in, and then I put it, I keep them on underneath my bib, so they almost act as kind of like a base layer, but a little bit of extra insulation. I love the Timberline pants; they're uh, not technically a whitetail pant, and and most of the time I'm wearing solids on this just uh, because this is well, this is what I have for it. And um, but uh, the bottom, the seat of it is waterproof. Knees are waterproof. You have knee pads that can go in here. So I use those while I'm in the saddle. Now they do not work as good as knee pads for that are designed for saddle hunting. Um, so t t usually I'll put a pad around the tree too and strap it around if I'm going to be there all day just to, to, to make sure that I uh, stay comfortable there. And uh, the last thing that I'm wearing in here is my bino harness with the Sika Mountain Optics harness. Inside of that, I got the Maven B3 8x30s. You've heard me talk about these many, many times on the podcast. Love this glass. And um, I'm trying out the other rangefinder this year. So I've been using the RF1 forever. The So I'm using the CRF1 here. So it's um, the, the cheaper model, smaller one here. So I've been playing around with this nice little rangefinder. So I have that in the right rangefinder pocket. Then I have Milkweed that i keep in front of that in a little pouch there so i can always be checking the wind garmin in reach um and then uh the insta 360 keep that on the side of the pack there something happened i can hit the button right on the front and it'll start recording and be able to shoot there that was a tip from jordan riley that he actually just sent me uh the other day so this is a brand new uh, idea i haven't messed around with it a whole lot yet but um it looks like it works out pretty good well, I stepped on my cord, but uh, all right, last thing I'm coming back into the camera here is my bow setup. So I have uh, the Prime Rev X2 bow and uh, the Prime Tight Spot Quiver and uh, the Prime Hamsky Epsilon Rest. Everything is integrated, makes it super nice on this bow. Uh, I have Dialed's Arxos three pin sight. So has three dots on there and uh i really like that sight be able to move it and it matches really nice with the bow it's pretty slick looking 
And uh, Stoker Eye Stabilizer. I've had this stabilizer for, I don't know, I think I bought it in 2016, but it's worked pretty good, sidebar there. And then from an aero standpoint, I have Method ZMR, which Method I don't believe is any longer in business, but uh, I still have some arrows there. I have Nocturnals on a couple of them just because I don't have any more of them and I didn't get them uh, ordered in time for season. But all my arrows still shoot the same, even though there's about an eight grain difference with those Nocturnals on the back. For broadheads, I have three different broadheads in my quiver, and you might laugh at that, but I um, they're all shooting exactly the same. I have no issues with them tuning, so I have been shooting the Iron Wheel Wide 125s for quite a while now. I have those in there, but I also have G5 Dead Meats, uh, the one and a half inch expandables that I've heard are really good. I have never been an expandable guy, but uh, I'm messing around with those. And I also picked up some G5 Montex, just a three blade, super easy to sharpen. And uh, those fly really nice too. So got those all in the quiver to uh, mess around with. But well, looking at the time, I guess I went over quite a bit. We're at about 25 minutes here. So I apologize for that. Uh, a lot of stuff to go through. But I wanted to run through my gear here and just kind of give you an idea what I was using going into the rut. And like I said, I'll have the list over on the website online. If you have any specific questions about anything, feel free to ask. I'd love to dive deeper into them. Uh, didn't didn't really uh, realize how long it was going to take just to go through all this stuff quickly. But anyways, I really appreciate everyone listening. If you have any questions, you want to send them in to be featured on this episode or have them answered, then send them to my email, bowdeastmeetswesthunt.com. Otherwise, uh, you can leave a comment on the YouTube video and I'll check all those, keep them in a list and uh, we'll keep on rolling. Well, thanks everybody for listening. If you liked it, share it with your friends, leave a rating and review. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit eastmeetswesthunt.com, Facebook at East Meets West Outdoors, and Instagram at East Meets West Hunt. If you enjoyed today's episode, please review and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.